Oftentimes, addiction can exasperate character flaws such as deception, egoism, isolation, laziness. These are all problems that can sink your recovery effort, and they're typically things that we kind of fight through, especially early on in the process, because as our addiction progressed, these character flaws become more and more exasperated. They really do start dominating our lifestyle. And so in order to fight that, sometimes we have to be able to use tools in order to kind of counteract the negative effects of these things. Uh, one of the things that we can do is to sit down with a recovery partner, and you've heard me say this over and over again, but there's one distinct tactic that I want to present to you, regardless of who your recovery partner is, whether it's like a sponsor in a 12-step recovery room, if it's just a person you know, uh, if it's a clergy member, whatever, you can use a weekly check-in. And what the weekly check-in does is it forces accountability on your shoulders. Um, what you're primarily doing is you're going back to the recovery partner and you're uh, presenting yourself in an executive summary format what happened the prior week. So every single week you just pick the day and you you go over the prior week's activities. What did you accomplish? What did you miss on your targets? Were there any setbacks, including relapses? Did you have anything that was a struggle, meaning inside of the addiction or maybe even outside of the addiction? Uh, and then you talk about what your upcoming week is going to look like. I know I have to accomplish this, this, and this. I know that my struggles might be here and here. So you're kind of saying those things out loud. But the recovery partner is going to be listening to this so that the next time you talk to them, there's going to be an expectation, both on the recovery partner's standpoint and on your standpoint. You, know, you said that you were going to take on all these things. How'd you do, right? So this is going to set forth accountability inside of your lifestyle, inside of your recovery lifestyle. And this is a very good thing because it's going to get you cognitive about all the things you have to accomplish. And the weight's on your shoulders at that point. Um, if you start letting your ego take control, if you start getting lazy, if you start lying, which oftentimes we do in addiction because we don't want our ego to get harmed, uh, all these things are going to manifest and become present not only to your recovery partner, but there'll be a bit of you that recognizes it too. And you don't want to do that, right? So if you keep talking week after week after week, always presenting what you're doing, what you're currently working on, and what you just accomplished last week, it's going to make you cognizant of all of your successes. Yay, you need to do that. But also just letting you know, like, okay, there's a lot of work here. And recovery is a lot of work, not just in what we do inside of like our recovery programs and trying to work a system, but also just life in general. As I like to say, like a lot of the struggles that happen in recovery programs, they're, they're not the actual addiction itself. It's all the crap that happens around it. You still got to live your life. And, you know, I kind of push for kind of expanding yourself. Like you really start want to start working your outer circle, as I like to call it. You want to start, you know, doing more social engagement. You want to start, you know, working harder inside of your career, filling up some uh, meaningful goals inside of your life that are going to help you become a better person. And often, inside of recovery programs, those are first steps. In other words, uh, you hadn't really been exercising that way in your life before because you've been so nested inside of your addiction. So what you do is you talk about it. Now, the trick to these weekly meetings is that you want to keep it five to 10 minutes. I say 10 minutes at the max. You're not there to have a really long conversation with your recovery partner. What you're doing is an executive summary. You get in, you talk about the details. If you have to, you bust out your phone, you set the timer up on it. 10 minutes, start, right? And you got that 10 minutes to tell them as much as you possibly can. Now for the recovery partner, it's important that they just sit back and just listen. And the only time they're supposed to talk is when they have a question. So they're patiently listening, all the information's being relayed to them. And the only thing they're ever going to do is ask qualifying questions. So perhaps, uh, let's just say that, yeah, you know, I want to go to the gym this week and uh, sign up for a membership. The recovery partner might say, well, didn't you say that last week? What's changed this week? So again, qualifying question. 
And that forces the person who's inside of the recovery effort to work cognitively like, oh, okay, yeah, you're right. I did say that last week. So they actually have to start working on their answers cognitively, like coming up with, yeah, how am I going to change things up? What do I have to do differently? And that's its purpose is to really start making you work hard and how you're going to, to answer these difficult questions that come up week after week after week. In other words, you're not going to be the ostrich anymore. You're not hiding your head in the sand. You're countable. And that's what recovery is all about. This is The Road to Recovery. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions, you can leave them here on the comments of this particular video. You can also follow me on Twitter, Road to Recovery 11. And again, also on my email address, Road to Recovery 11 at yahoo.com. I try to answer my DMs as often as I possibly can. I hope you found this information useful. Take care and stay on that road to recovery.